morning, ladies of our church, Groves First Baptist Church. And I say morning because that is the time that I spend with the Lord. And I know that's the time that many of you spend with the Lord as well. And so I know that is true with Dee and I want to welcome Dee Humphreys this morning. Good morning. <laughs> We're so happy to have you with us, and we cannot wait to hear a word from you. Yeah, I'm excited. Yeah. yeah. So uh, I just wanted to tell you a little story. I uh, It was kind of funny. Uh, earlier this week, I received an email, and it was one of those advertising emails, you know, from a store that wanted you to buy their stuff. But I normally don't look at them. But the thing that caught my attention was the headline, because the headline si said, home is where the fun is home is where the fun is. I thought that was so ironic considering the fact that we're all sheltering at home right now and it went on to list four or five different things that you can do uh, this summer at home in your own backyard and I'm not going to go into that now but that kind of uh, leads me into my first question for you Dee and that is what what's fun to you? What does fun mean to you? <laughs> fun to me is making people laugh oh. and I love to do this by um, pulling pranks on, on my family, trying Ooh. to scare them. What kind of pranks? <laughs> well, a prank that we did here recently was me and my son, we painted the cat to look like a skunk, and then we would toss it at people like my daughter or my husband and record it and laugh while they ran away. <laughs> <laughs> but um, we also, we have silly masks and a, a gorilla suit, and uh, we just like to jump out and scare each other. We have lots of fun at my home. Um, I guess we just have to entertain ourselves more or less, but uh, a challenge. Oh, go ahead. That's a great, that is a great thing to do or to know when you're sheltering at home. I mean, here we are. And so uh, I, I, I bet your family doesn't get bored, do they? Uh, they are now. <laughs> they are. Let me ask you another question. Um, what would you like our church women to know about you? Maybe something about your career or something about you outside of the church. We, we know you from church. We see you there. And just like all of us, you know, we, we always have on our happy faces, except you always do anyway. <laughs> but what, what would you like them to know about you outside the church? Well, let's see. Most people tend to think that I'm an extrovert when they meet me, yeah. but I'm, I'm really both. I'm introverted and extroverted. And so just as much as I love people and I love talking to them, I also love my quiet time. And I like to be alone by myself a lot. <laughs> what do you do in that alone time? I usually, it's pray, I uh, study the Bible, and I do a lot of writing about the things that I've learned. Mm, that's great. That's a great way to spend quiet time. I, I had a verse that uh, came to me this morning from 1 John 5, um, chapter 4, and it talks about the fact that our faith is the victory that overcomes this world. And that jumped out to me because it said, overcomes the world and when you think about our world today and everything that's going on in our world today not just in our own personal lives but everywhere um i just wanted to i just wanted to ask you about your faith what what does faith mean to you faith means to me i, I have a really great analogy for this one and uh my husband went out and bought some groceries the other day and he comes home and we're putting them away. And, uh, I pull out a package of fish fry uh, and I lay it on the counter and I kind of look at him and I'm like, did you catch any fish? Do you, do you have any fish? And he <laughs> turns around and he looks at me real boldly and goes, not yet. To me that that's faith. And then, um, I also heard, Tony Evans one time give a great definition of faith. He said, faith is acting like God is telling the truth. So I love both analogies because I think that points us to Hebrews 11, 1, which says faith is the assurance of things hoped for and evidence of the things not seen. That is so right. And so tell me how old you were when you came to faith in Christ. I was 18 years old. Okay. And how did that come about? 
Well, I grew up in a, uh, in a non-Christian household and my life lacked a lot of peace and a lot of purpose. Mm -hmm. And so uh, at 16 years old, I, uh, I ran away from home because I was looking for what I was missing, but I was looking for it in all the wrong places. Mm -hmm. And uh, during this time, I actually met a Southern Baptist preacher's son named James, who kind of had a, a little bit of rebellious streak too, so we quickly became friends. And uh, two years later, we began dating, and uh, he starts to ask me about faith and God. And at the time, I didn't, I didn't really know much about or understand faith. And uh, I really didn't know much about God or Jesus. And so uh, he invited me to church and I started going with him on a consistent basis. And then in October, 1998, he invites me and a group of our friends to Heaven's Gates, Hell's Flames. It's a production that they put on every year. And it just so happened to be in Grove that year. And so we go and um, I'm watching the production and there's a scene with, uh, with a girl and three guys, and they're drinking and they're driving, and they have a car wreck. They all die. They're standing at the gates of heaven, and they're knocking on, uh, knocking on the door to be let in. And then this, uh, this powerful voice of authority speaks to them and says, depart from me. I do not know you. And you didn't live for my son while you were on the earth, my son, Jesus Christ. And I remember at that point going, wow, this, this is, if I was to die today, this is how my life would end. I, I wouldn't be going to heaven because I, um, I didn't live my life for Christ and I didn't know him either. So when the production was over, a guy comes on the stage to explain how Jesus took our place on the cross and he died to forgive us of our sins. And his purpose on earth was to rescue sinners and to restore us to God. And then he asked if anyone wanted to walk forward and give their life to Christ. So I remember having this heaviness or this conviction that I've never felt before. And, uh, but you know what, I was, uh, I really was too cool to walk in front of 500 people in that auditorium because uh, I had a lot of pride. But James, who was sitting right next to me, gets up, walks halfway down the aisle, he, and he just stops. I, I remember thinking, what is he doing? And uh, he turns around, he comes back to where I was sitting, and he, he looks at me and he holds out his hand and he says, D, it's your choice. I'm not going to make you. And um, I kind of hesitated a little bit longer. <laughs> and then I, uh, I put my hand in his. I stood up and we walked forward together. And so at 18 years old, I committed my life to Christ by uh, confessing with my mouth, believing in my heart that Jesus Christ is Lord. And uh, the great thing about it is uh, my, my mind, my heart, my attitude towards God changed. And I was, I was, uh, I found that peace and that purpose and that love that I was looking for. So uh, needless to say, uh, Two months later, I married that man. <laughs> I married James. <laughs> and uh, this year we'll be celebrating uh, 22 years of marriage. Oh, that is a wonderful story of God's grace and his faithfulness, but also your obedience to the call. And thank you so much for sharing that. It just reminded me of another verse in 1 John chapter 5 that says, and this is the testimony that God gave us eternal life. And this life is in his son. And so you have just told that story. You've just told your testimony. And then I want to go down to verse uh, 13 in that same chapter where it says, actually, John says, I write these things to you who believe in the name of the son of God, that you may know that you have eternal life. 
And so the Lord gave you a tremendous story, a tremendous testimony. And now you share with others that you know without a shadow of a doubt that you have eternal life. And so I, I just, I know that that story is going to be a tremendous encouragement to those who see this and those who hear uh, your story, your testimony of how God not only worked in your life then, but how God is still at work in your life today. And that's one of the things that I have so enjoyed about getting to know you is knowing and seeing and hearing what a strong, faithful Christian woman you are. And I, and I so appreciate the opportunity God has given us to, um, to get acquainted. And so let me ask you a final question because we're, we're talking about our church as well. Um, what would you tell someone who is not churched? What would you tell them about our church that would attract them to attend? I would tell them that uh, God is stirring the hearts and minds of people in his church mm -hmm. and things are changing at Rose First Baptist. Mm -hmm. I would tell them that they are, they're loved and they're needed in this body believer. And um, we also like to have a lot of fun. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. That, that is so true. And uh, you add to that the fact that we have a fabulous preacher, uh, a man of God that cares about the people of the church, and um, and I'm so thankful for that. In fact, I'll tell a funny little story. When we visited the church three years ago, the pastor came to visit us in our home, and uh, he asked what I was looking for in a church, and I said, well, three things. Um, a choir. He says, yeah, I got that. I said, women's ministry. He says, yeah, I got that. I said, and great preaching. And he said, well, two out of three oh. is bad. <laughs> I, I just have loved that story. Uh, I get a laugh every time I think about it. Oh, yeah. But as we close our time today, I just want to encourage anyone who is watching to come and visit our church when we are able to begin to gather uh, together again. And I, I miss that. I know you miss it. And I know everyone watches misses it. And that's why we put this program together is to keep us connected, to keep us connected as women and to keep us connected in God's word. And so I just ask that you would think on that this week. And then next week, we're going to hear from Chrissy Nelson. And I look forward to that. Thank you. And God bless you. Mm -hmm.